Hey guys, today we're going to give you an overview of your liver, bile, and the microbiome, okay, because they all work together. So these are the players involved in bile production. So let's just kind of start with what is bile, okay? Well, first of all, um, you have the fat or oil and you have water, right? They don't mix too well. So basically when you consume food and some of that's going to be fat, it's not going to really break down in a water-based situation. So bile is used as a detergent. It's an intestinal detergent. Okay. That's what it is. It's soap. So if you were to um, have a greasy hands and wash your hands with soap, um, you would get rid of the, the grease. If you wash your hands without soap, uh, it's going to be real hard to clean them. So try to digest without bile. It's going to be really hard. So if we actually take a look at oil, okay, if I just open this up here and do my demo and pour in my bile detergent. Great. I just kind of spilled all over my hand here. Keep it nice and clean here. All right. So I poured my bile in there, my detergent. And then I go presto, I just shake a little bit. Bam, look at that. It's all being emulsified right now. In other words, the detergent breaks down the fat uh, particles and uh, what happens, it breaks them down to smaller particles. Okay, so bile basically breaks down your fat. And then you have the pancreas, which comes along and releases enzymes to break it down even further. So you can actually pull in the fat soluble vitamins and the essential fatty acids omega-3 fatty acids and like DHA, which is good for the brain. So, so that's kind of the function of bile. And so there's many different things that can happen that can actually interfere with your bile production. One is you have the gallbladder removed. So now you're not going to have a concentrated bile anymore. Normally with the gallbladder, you're supposed to concentrate the bile up to 20 times. So if you don't have a gallbladder, it's not concentrated. It trickles down from the liver and goes in your small intestine. And then it basically, um, you know, it doesn't, it's not concentrated, so it's not going to be as, as effective. Okay. So you're going to have undigested fat and you're going to have less fat soluble vitamins, less omega-3. So that's one aspect. It could be that you're not taking enough omega-3 fatty acids or enough fat soluble vitamins from your diet. That's another reason why you can have a deficiency of those, uh, those vitamins, uh, and health factors. Now, if the liver is damaged, Okay, let's say it's fatty, it's inflamed, you have hepatitis, um, or you have scar tissue, cirrhosis, you're not going to be able to produce as much bile. So you'll have a bile deficiency from that alone. So many people who have insulin resistance because they're eating too much chronic elevation of sugar and starch develop inflammatory conditions of the liver, and then you start getting all sorts of problems with the fatty liver, and then you can't produce bile. So that's another aspect that uh, you should be aware of. But the microbiome, all the 10 trillion bacteria, they're not all in the gut, um, but a good portion of them are, help to recycle the bile. So your bile is recycled four to 12 times in a given day. Okay, 95% of all the bile is recycled. So your body is very, very efficient. So if you don't have enough uh, bacteria in your gut, in the small, uh, I'm sorry, the large intestine, that could be the reason why you don't have enough bile to be recycled to have it work in the body. So we want to look at all the different aspects, especially after antibiotics or you have some type of imbalance like diarrhea, you lost all that, that, mi that microbe there. And then also the other thing I want to mention is if you don't have enough bile, either because you don't have a gallbladder or because the liver is damaged, that alone can create an overgrowth of pathogenic bacteria in the gut. So we need the, the bile to balance out um, this mi microbial life. It doesn't seem to interfere with the good bacteria, only the bad bacteria. So it actually will kill off and dissolve the outer shell of the bad bacteria. So you can see it's very dynamic and uh, each thing works together. And I just wanted to bring, bring this up of, of all the players involved with bile. And it could happen from the liver, could happen from the gallbladder, it, you can be deficient from the diet or the gut. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, so there's a whole bunch of people that really need this information. So 
press the share button, and let's get it way out there. Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books it's called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore, actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide, Major Updates on the Body Types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to the Healthy Keto Plan, okay? If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever wanna know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning. It goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you, within 45 minutes, learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special. If you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just want to clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.